just a little bit of extra water left over uh, but if you want it flavored particularly if you're doing a seafood or shrimp flavor uh, I'm doing a shrimp flavor uh, I got dried shrimp and so this will go into the soup base uh, and that's that soup base will give the uh, the, the, uh, the, the seafood the shrimp and rice that rice will give the rice a good seafood flavor so anyways I'm done I'm, I'm out I'm packed uh, I think I'll talk to you uh, a little bit later on uh, about more about diet and so on and so forth, and some of the complex some of the complexities with uh, organic chemistry, uh, and then we'll go from there. So, anyways, I will see you in the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory's Big Bang Theory L's, uh, BTS blog. Alrighty. Oh, welcome back to the, the uh, next segment of the BTS vlogs. It seems like I've been away for a while. because <laughs> I didn't vlog as much. Uh, I ended up sleeping longer uh, today than I did. Uh, well, the last few days I ended up I've ended up sleeping more than I expected to. So uh, the amount of vlogging I did was was down. Was uh, less. So let me give you a time and date stamp anyways before, <laughs> before I forget. It is 6 hours and 52 minutes into the day of Wednesday, April 13th, 2016. Yeah, uh, things are going well enough. The second episode of uh, Tweetline Plus is up. And th we're now talking success. We've, we've, there was a lot of anticipation, a lot of missed deadlines, but finally we got there. The work was done, and he said, "This is what we talk about incremental progress." That, uh, <laughs> and one of the things that sort of makes me successful at this type of work, people say, "Well, how do you do this stuff? How, you know, uh, you know, so much failure? Why don't you give up?" Because I don't, and a lot of people would give up. And they, people say, "Well, why can't I live my dreams?" Because more often than not, when you sit down to actually take your dream, your your idea, and make it into a concept, and make, and take the concept and turn it into reality. The steps that are required to do so are in many cases tedious. And there's a lot of failure. And unless you're willing to accept that failure, you're not going to achieve what you expect to achieve. And so, in many cases, the dream dies. I got chap lips for a bit. Um, and those who do succeed, a lot of times people don't see the amount of work that they usually put into things. And this is, people say, well, why, why do what I'm doing here? And because for science, it's necessary. As I said, if you're doing research, you need to know about the researcher as almost as much as you do about the research. Right, it's particularly if you're following in that person's path or you want to use some of the work he's doing as an example. I mean, we have, uh, I know I, I have friends, younger friends. And they're in school, they're in, uh, I'm still elementary or, or, or junior high or even high school. And their view of science isn't real. They view that you're going into a lab and you're working in a lab all day long and, uh, that you're launching rockets all the time, or you're, you know, you're doing something exciting on a daily basis. Well, the thing is, for me, a lot of this is exciting because I am pushing those those boundaries. I am pushing those limits. But you see the 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 the, the, the vlogs where I'm exhausted and my eyes won't won't open. Well, this is because I'm pushing my limits. I'm out on that edge, 
And so you have these moments, well, not a little bit of moments, but you have these, for me, these moments, you can determine the, uh, the, the quantity of, uh, of that statement, of, of the, uh, the amount, yourself, you're, sort of, you're going to observe it. Uh, this is my edge. And no, it's not necessarily exciting. It's not that you're, you know, launching rockets every single day or, or uh, uh, working a lab just randomly, you know, working the or you're on the computer, you know, the genius, you just seen the movies, the genius, the genius uh, 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 whiz kid who does all the programming, and he's there, you know, randomly typing away at, at, at a very fast pace, at a fast pace, and gets within five, ten minutes, he's doing, he's doing what he wants to do, you know. Well, that's not the case. In many cases, it's hours. You know, I mean, I've been working on, I've been revamping uh, uh, the the INN network, the the news network, for more than six months. It was six months to, to do this was at least six months worth of work. Um, to revamp the uh, my uh, Cyborg Alpha TV network it was just about a year. It took me to revamp everything, to re to restructure, to finally get all the pieces, uh, in a line that, in alignment that I needed to have lined up and it connected together. This has been a, a, a process. This has been a year long process. The initial stepping into vlogging and my stuff from the from the old stuff my, from where I started off with. On a simple laptop, I actually it wasn't even a laptop. It was a netbook. It was an Asus. It, uh, it was an Asus uh, Triple E. And it was from that web camera. I was watching this. Uh, it was New Year's Eve. I was. Did, I don't really go anywhere New Year's. I was there by myself. I was watching my cartoons, and I was watching a, uh, a vlogger named Cassandra. She has a channel called Nerzorel. And I was thinking to myself, oh, she makes, you know, it, it was a different type of vlog. I, I've never really seen that type of vlog before. Most vloggers were up there doing a comedy, but they're all doing about, doing something, something about comedy. And I wasn't, this is what, what I didn't want to do about comedy. I wanted to do, you know, the uh, my behind the scenes. I wanted to show uh, my life. I wanted people to you know, sort of hang out and see what science is really, what a scientist does on a daily basis. And... It was Cassandra that I found at Nerds Around that she was doing this. And I watched to see what she did, and I said, well, this looks interesting. So I thought to myself, instead of, you know, because I had gone around, I looked at, at, at uh, a, a number of, uh, of prominent vloggers, like Nixie Pixel, who do uh, Linux vlogs. And they all said it was impossible to do... Uh, To do uh, to do uh, film work to do serious uh, film work with with Linux. Linux didn't have a a solid uh, uh, background for uh, uh, film production for for video production. So I thought you know that's, that's it. That's nothing's going to happen. You know I, I moved on to Linux. I you know was, was working on Linux. I was getting things aligned and things. Well, no more nothing nothing to do with video anymore. But the thing is, I didn't give up. But that was the conclusion. The conclusion of a lot of vloggers, uh, people on, on YouTube who knew Linux, can't do can't do uh, video production on Linux. I said, I'm here. It's now New Year's Eve. I've got nothing left. To, nothing else to do. It's bored. So I said, let's try it. Let's try. Let's just try doing a a a, a capture of the, of the video of, of the webcam. So this and the thing is, I didn't really know the software on, on what software to use. I said, let's try to use, uh, let's see if uh, Google's YouTube, the, the YouTube uh, live capture works. So I did that. And I developed my first uh, Big Bang Theory URL. Uh, the first episodes were on the laptop using uh, YouTube. I recorded directly from the web camera onto YouTube. That was the, that was the beginning. And ironically, it's in the sort of it's, it's somewhat the same place as uh, the uh, the research desk is now. I mean, because that that was my first research desk. But now things have changed, and you know, many many years later, well, it was I think four or five four or five about four years later, uh, we're back again. 
uh, to this research desk again, this area. New research desk, completely revamped. Uh, so I think it's four generations of, of re you know, one, one generation of research desk a year, uh, and we're back here again. So <laughs> uh, this is how things you know, sometimes end up going. But I said, I learned how to vlog. I learned that I could do things on it. And then the next step, as, as I started getting better and better at that, I started learning that on, on Linux, it wasn't as simple as going in and pressing buttons. Nothing in Linux is out of the box. You have to sit down and figure out how to work with the various different functions that, th that are there. And then as I started working with these different functions, I'm still, I'm still there's a lot left to learn. Uh, I realized that you could do uh, a professional quality type, of, professional type of, uh, uh, of uh, video production. And this is where I decided to create my channel, build my channel on Linux. And this, cha and this, whole t this entire channel, everything we do, my, even my company, we're all Linux. There is no dual boot system here. And so I've made this achievement of going from knowing absolutely nothing about video production on Linux... Uh, to knowing a lot about uh, video production. And is it even the lot that I know right now? Uh, there's still much there, there's still much more to go. But the thing is I've had if I hadn't taken that sort of random chance on New Year's Eve, then I wouldn't be here at all. And I think this is a lot of times a lot of times your success and this is what we're talking about expectations. Don't necessarily follow your expectations. Don't expect your expectations to come through the way you think they're going to come through. So a lot of times, your success comes in ma in manners, in ways that you don't expect. And so this is true with the diet. I'm, 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 I'm adjusting my diet again. Uh, and... Every time you make an adjustment, there's a little extra cost to it. There's a little question whether or not you can you can actually do this, or you know, there's always unknowns. And this is going back to the, uh, the excitement of us. Yeah. Well, I promise I'll be vlogging as much as I can throughout the day to let you into more of my life. And I am. I'm not getting up. I'm just going back to bed. Uh, I got up around 1 o'clock because uh, uh, my body was hungry and I needed to get something to eat. And I'm going back to get bed again for just about two hours. I have to be up at 7, 7.30 uh, to go to church. So, where are we today? Uh, we are five hours and six minutes into the day of Sunday, April 10th. I would like to wish a happy birthday to my niece, uh, Claire. And... Uh, it looks like that will be all caught up uh, on next weekend. Next weekend we should be catching up on Monday, Tuesday. By Monday, tu by Monday, Tuesday we should be more or less caught up uh, with the vlog. So in other words, the vlogs will be two or three days out from when you're seeing it. So that will be a good thing. Uh, so, but the thing is, is I don't really know how things are going to end up working out. <laughs> Well, so we, you, you, you intend to do something, but uh, it doesn't always work out the way you intend it to work out. So, uh, right now it looks like everything is going to go on, on schedule. I actually have Tweetline Plus, which I've been talking about forever getting out. Uh, it's done. It's edited. I just have to do a description to get it to queued up on the upload uh, up, on the upload system to, go, to get up to... Uh, uh, YouTube, the INN channel on YouTube, uh, so that's what has to happen, but I'm going to be out most of the day on Sunday, because it's my niece's birthday, so, oh, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge to do that, so, uh, mm. I am tired, and the body, it, what happened is, basically, uh, I think it was, uh, yeah, I did the heavy walk today. I had, did the food shopping, well, yesterday. And this is the problem when you're up and down multiple times. You, you forget the, uh, 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 the time of day it is. And, and what day it is. So, yesterday I did the heavy walk. 
And I got back. I talked to you guys around 1.30. And then usually my, uh, my 4 o'clock, because I, I had something to eat. By 4 o'clock, the adrenaline had dropped off significantly. And the soreness, the muscle soreness, began to kick in. And so that's where I ended up going to bed around 4 and didn't get up until 1 o'clock in the morning. So that was more than 8 hours. So it was a 4, yeah, 4 to midnight, 4 p.m. to midnight. That's uh, 6 hours gets you to 10 o'clock, 8 hours to midnight, uh, and then uh, to 1 o'clock in the morning, about 9 hours worth of sleep. So that's, that's usually pretty good. But when your body is that taxed, when it's when you're in, in it, particularly you're in this sort of sleep deprivation mode, uh, the way I have it, there's sort of a uh, a there is a <clears throat> let's slow myself down. <laughs> the things are going too fast. Um, when you have a deficit, a sleep deficit, the way I have a sleep de deficit. The nine hours is good, but now your body starts to want more. And this is sort of the situation we're in here. But as soon as I'm out of this situation, I go, I've got, I've got the good nine, good nine hours. That was good. But here we go again with another broken day. Now, I'll be up in just in two hours, and it's going to be another long day. So uh, we'll see what ends up happening. Oh. Uh, how I end up scheduling things, scheduling things out. It really depends on what happens during the day. And we'll go from there. Alright, I'll see you in the next segment of... Uh, probably when I get up and go to church, I'll vlog again. Uh, I'll see you in the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory. I'll uh, uh, BTS vlog. Well, the excitement isn't in the, in, in, what, in the way you expect it. The excitement is completely different. And you leave the notes open like this. You leave this, this vlog like this. So that people can learn from this. Because people say, okay, well, what is a scientist? Is, is science what, what's being presented to me in school? And the answer is no. There are a variety of different types of scientists. They have a variety of different types of lies. I am one type of scientist, and this is the way I live. This is the way I'm involved in science. It's 24-7. It's, it's uh, seven days a week. Science is part of who I am. It's part. Of, it's not specifically a job title. So, Anyways, uh, I'm going to leave this here for now. And I'm going to go get something to eat. Have some breakfast. And get the day started. It's just about 7 o'clock right now. <laughs> Alright, I'll see you in the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory's BTS vlog. Alright, take it easy. Well, I can finally say good morning, people, because it's actually morning. Yeah, it's just about 7 o'clock in the morning, and it's time to get the day started. Uh, the day has been shifting, so uh, let me give you a time and date stamp. It is uh, 6 hours and 54 minutes into the day of Thursday, April 14th, uh, 2016. So, here we go. Um... I've been sleeping better the last few days. Uh, that's actually why there hasn't been a lot of vlogging. I just actually, my body felt tired enough and I ended up sleeping a lot more than I usually did. And I finally, actually, uh, I got a full uh, uh, 12 hours worth of sleep. So uh, I'm catching up on the deficit thing. So I'm feeling better than I did before. Uh, as I said before, I, you know, I, I, I experiment uh, with myself. I'm, uh, as many uh, uh, medical scientists did in the past, they experimented on themselves. They sort of, uh, it, 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 <laughs> I think that there, there is a perspective that you know that if, if, from the I think from the scientific point of point of view that uh, if you're experimenting on yourselves, you're not likely to be as reckless as if you're ex uh, experimenting on an animal where. You, you, you know, wow, if the animal dies, wow, you know, that happens, you know. And that's kind of the attitude that a lot of uh, uh, <laughs> researchers take because, you know, they're experimenting on animals. They're not necessarily experimenting on themselves. So the, the care that they would take 
uh, of the animal is not the same as if they would take care of themselves. So, uh, the caution used with yourself is often significantly better, and doesn't necessarily is not is not necessarily a deterrent or an impediment. Something that slows down the research. It can actually enhance the research because you, because you're not looking at the extreme. You're simply looking at something that you, you you're getting to know the body. You you view the body as like as I do. I view the body as a chemistry set, and I'm looking at the organic chemistry uh, within the human body. <coughs> In scientific term, it's known as uh, organic, chemist, organic chemistry in situ. That means in the place that is found. So, well, most research is laboratory uh, bench work. And it's not in a dynamic environment. The research that I do is in a, is in a dynamic environment. And as I said before, a lot of this has to do with the fact that... Uh, uh, of my physics background is that in the physics background, because you're dealing with quantum physics, you are dealing with a dynamic environment. You are dealing with an observational environment. Uh, you you really can't bring a, a lot of the stuff you're doing in quantum mechanics. It's initially difficult to bring the uh, the to bring the uh, the research back into the lab. And even when you do bring the research back in the lab, because the nature of quantum mechanics, which is probabilistic. There's, there's not just because you're doing something logically doesn't need necessarily mean that the, that the sorry my eyes are hurting my left eye actually uh, doesn't mean necessarily mean that uh, the experiment itself will behave logically right? just you know your logic is not it, 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 well let's put it this way your na nature is not nature is not obligated to follow your logic. Just because you think something logical doesn't necessarily mean that's what's going to happen in nature. So, uh, this is understood in physics. And so, accordingly, it affects physicists who are working on the bench. And it's often necessary, uh, from my perspective anyways, that this is what I did, that you have to stand outside the bench and see how these uh, uh, the what you're working on, how you, your understanding fits within the dynamic environment. And this pushes your knowledge forward. So, uh, but you know, the engineering uh, lasers and stuff like that, that's a very different requirement. The engineering is more bench work. You do have to have an understanding of physics, but it's not necessary that you, that you do have the perspective that a researcher in quantum mechanics will have. A researcher in quantum mechanics, your job is your job is primarily to research uh, the unknown the unknown part of physics. Go into that so the edges of, of uh, quantum mechanics and see where the edges are, how they're defined, if they're defined. Uh, but this is not the case if you're engineering, you're working on a laser, you're designing a laser, then your job specifically your focus specifically is that laser, and so that becomes the environment that you work in. And a lot of experimental work is done. Is that you have some idea, you have an idea, basically a concept of how the laser should work. You do your initial setup to see if your initial concept works. If it doesn't work, then you start going to tweak it. If it even if it does work, you start going to tweak it. You know a little bit more, of look looking at the different aspects of what your concept was and now because you could have gone from concept and on on the experimental bench you now have some degree of reality of your concept uh, that initial first uh, reality is not necessarily going to be the final reality so uh, that's sort of the step on the in terms of physics in, in terms of a physicist but uh, you can extend this out because I said before uh, when you're in physics uh, physics is the pinnacle of all science and you can step into any direction that you want to. Uh, one of my choices was to get into cybernetics. Uh, this is creating the uh, a human being like data. That's on Star Trek, as he's a character on Star Trek, and he's an android. So everyone wants to create the android, the the the, the life like human robot, uh, and there's that challenge out there. And so there are a lot of players out there doing this. A lot of uh, researchers. 
uh, I decided to go in that direction with because I could because with with physics it works on the computers. It, it uh, allows me to build the network that I have here, and it resolves some of the uh, computational program problems that you would have if you were if you were a scientist. In other words. Uh, if you're a physicist working at a large institute, you go to the computer, if you want to work on a, a computer model, you send that model over to the computer science department, the computer science department builds your computer for you, and you, there you go. Uh, but if you're by yourself, you don't have that option, so you have to wear many hats. And I think, I thought the best way to, to resolve the computer science aspect of uh, my research, in quant research into quantum physics was to basically get into cybernetics. And as I did that, I realized that the best way of doing this would be to look at organic chemistry in the human body, uh, to look at the human body as an uh, organic chemistry set. And this is how I began developing the diets. I looked at it, the diet from the perspective of, quantum, of, uh, of uh, organic chemistry. And that's what I've sort of been doing the last few weeks as is actually adjusting my diet a little bit more. And normally there's there's an expense to buying the liquid, basically. First thing is, oh, I'm going to go buy pop, I'm going to go buy juice, and so on and so forth. I, not commenting on the spe specific health aspect of these things. Each drink has its own particular uses. So people say, oh, oh, pop is bad, pop. Well, not necessarily. Pop isn't necessarily all bad. You have to look into the history of pop and realize that at one point in time, uh, <clears throat> When they call it a tonic, this is for people mostly on the East Coast uh, uh, who know it as a tonic, you bought it in a drugstore. And because the druggist, the, the chemist there, uh, would, would make it as part of uh, a cure-all for things. And the thing is, the different components within the syrup that produces the pop, which is basically a sugar, the various different elements go to react and produce a chemical reaction in your body. And for some people, it makes you feel better. Some people, it helps you do digestion. There, there are a number of people now who are doing uh, uh, this sort of rehash of uh, the old medicine, but they're calling it epigenetics. And epigenetics is learning how to use, uh, the, how to sort of program your genes that are, are in a way that is beneficial to your health. They're trying to create longevity. Uh, now the thing is, is that oh, they think they're doing something new. I was talking to and these are primarily young people doing this stuff. There's some older people doing, it, but uh, this primarily younger people uh, who have no idea of the history of pop, the history of tonic. And uh, one of the people was talking with, oh yeah, we're, 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 we're people are drinking acids now, and, and they're talking about not talking about hard acids, they're talking about like lemonade, orange juice, they're looking at the the acidic types of drinks. And they don't realize that Coca-Cola, one of the main ingredients in Coca-Cola, which made Coca-Cola a medicine, uh, was phosphoric acid. And phosphoric acid does have the, a, a dietetic benefit to it under certain conditions. Uh, find these conditions and then uh, Coca-Cola, instead of going from going, becoming a junk food, becomes a health food now. Because of the force, because of the phosphoric acid, and this is how the this is how organic chemistry works. But if you're not necessarily aware of organic chemistry, and a lot of these people who are doing epigenetics don't know an, 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 an organic chemistry, they know a bit of organic chemistry, but they don't. But very. very Democratic Earth. Earth.